Hey guys, what's up? I am Gaurav Nepal. I am from Institute of Medicine, Mars Guns Medical Campus, Nepal. And today I am going to discuss about the squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. Squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is one of the most common type of non-small cell lung cancer. The other type of non-small cell lung cancer are adenocarcinoma of the lung and large cell carcinoma of the lung. Squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is more common in men than in women and it is closely correlated with the history of tobacco smoking than any other type of lung cancer. It is more closely related with the history of tobacco smoking. Keep this in mind. Now, let's talk about the risk factor associated with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. The first one is smoking. Smoking is highly associated with squamous cell cancer. And another important point is radon gas. Radon gas is highly associated with squamous cell carcinoma. And the other risk factor include arsenic, beryllium, nickel, chromium, asbestos. Asbestos also causes mesothelioma. And gene mutation associated with squamous cell carcinoma include TB53 gene mutation, tumor protein 53 gene mutation, epidermal growth factor is GFR mutation, KRS mutation, and ALK mutation. TB53 mutation is also associated with Lee Froman syndrome, osteosarcoma, brain tumor, and various other type of cancer. And KRS mutation is also associated with um, gastric, um, gastric no, not gastric. It is associated with colon carcinoma, and it is also associated with pancreatic carcinoma and endometrial carcinoma. Epidermal growth factor mutation is also seen in glioblastoma. Now let's talk about gross description. It usually arises from the central portion of the lung. The tumor is central. It arises from the central portion of the lung affecting the larger bronchi it affects the larger bronchi you can see the tumor arising from the central portion of the lung this is the point of bifurcation of the trachea this is right bronchus and this is left bronchus you can see tumor mass arising from the primary bronchi and it is extending toward the peribronchial tissue it extends toward the peribronchial tissue it invades the peribronchial soft tissue it encroaches the peribronchial soft tissue lung parenchyma and nearby lymph node and sometimes it may compress the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein it may compress the pulmonary artery or pulmonary vein the tumor often have nodular growth it has nodular growth you can see the nodular growth with central necrosis you can see central necrosis and sometimes it may form cavity it may show cavitation and in this gross image you can see this is the primary bronchus and the tumor mass arising from the primary bronchus and it is extending into the lung parenchyma it includes it invades the lung parenchyma and sometimes it may compress the pulmonary vessel and lymph nodes now you can see in this x-ray you can see coin like lesion here and this is squamous cell carcinoma and you can see central cavitation here you can see central cavitation in this nodular lesion of squamous cell carcinoma in this lateral x-ray you can see nodular lesion of squamous cell carcinoma with central cavitation you can see the central cavitation here and in this axial ct scan um, through thorax you can see the lung here this is lung tissue and you can see squamous cell carcinoma here with central cavitation it is obvious that it is central cavitation of squamous cell carcinoma now i like to describe over the microscopic feature of squamous cell carcinoma the nest of polygonal cell with pink eosinophilic cytoplasm can be seen and the cytoplasm contains abundant keratin you can see large eosinophilic polygonal cell and sometimes keratin pulse can be seen in highly differentiated form in highly differentiated form you can see keratin pole along with the nest of tumor cell and you can also see intercellular bridges you can see intercellular bridges which is an interesting feature of squamous cell carcinoma the two important interesting feature of squamous cell carcinoma are keratin pulse and intercellular bridges these are also seen in well differentiated form of squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix and of skin and the nuclei are hyperchromatic and angular now in this image you can see intercellular bridges these are the intercellular bridges extending from one cell into another cell these are intercellular bridges you can see intercellular bridges here you can see intercellular bridges here everywhere you can see intercellular bridges so what actually is the intercellular bridge intercellular bridge is actually desmosome it is actually desmosome it is prominent desmosome desmosome what is desmosome i think you have studied in physiology desmosome adheres to cell tightly it is a type of cell junction now you can see keratin pole this is keratin pole you can see the formation of keratin pole here this is made up of keratin and tumor cell this is keratin pole 
it is seen in well differentiated highly differentiated form of squamous cell carcinoma you can see keratin fall here too you can see keratin fall it is the important feature of squamous cell carcinoma intercellular breeze and keratin fall is most important feature of squamous cell carcinoma now talking about the cytopathology of squamous cell carcinoma of the lung uh, after papanicolaou staining, staining of the sputum or after final aspiration cytology you can see numerous keratinized orangeophilic cell you can see malignant orangeophilic cell and you can note it that the orangeophilic cell are in the form of tadpole you can see orangeophilic cell in the form of tadpole and therefore they are also known as tadpole cell or fiber like cell to differentiate this cell from adenocarcinoma cell we can do immunohistochemical staining for thyroid transcription factor 1 it is negative for thyroid transcription factor 1 but adenocarcinoma is positive for thyroid transcription factor 1 and now clinical feature metastasis let's discuss about the metastasis the most common metastatic site of squamous cell carcinoma of the lung the most important is and all of you obviously know is hilar lymph node it involves hilar lymph node bilaterally you can see it in chest x-ray involvement of hilar lymph node bilaterally in the patient with squamous cell carcinoma the next one is adrenal gland adrenal gland is quite interesting uh, you can see the clinical scenario in which a uh, in which a patient with uh, a smoking history of 20 or 30 years is present to you uh, with um, symptom of rapid weight loss and coughing for more than a year and he is also present with increasing blood pressure hypertension so you can guess that the tumor has metastasized to his adrenal gland producing more amount of adrenaline creating hypertension now another most common site of metastasis of squamous cell cancer of the lung is brain brain is one of the most important site after adrenal gland so this was about the pathology of squamous cell carcinoma please look for my more video thank you